I'm Prophetess Joyce Hatton, and I found something good. I tell you what, it's Preach the Word Worldwide Network. I want you to stay tuned right there. God is going to bless your life. Get ready. Welcome to Preach the Word Worldwide Network. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, it is an awesome time tonight that we're having in the studios here in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm telling you, I want you to help me welcome this great man of God, Prophet Eric Brown. Blessings to you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on the Preach the Word show. Amen. Thank you Amen. for inviting me. <laughs> Amen. I'm coming from um, Orlando, Florida, not very far from Tallahassee. Yes, ma'am. But uh, thank you so much for coming on, on the show, yes, uh, man of God. Uh, it is always good to see young men mm -hmm. um, coming forth and doing the work of the Lord. And so it's an honor to have you. How, how old are you, young man? 24 years old. 24 years old. And how long have you been in ministry? Since I was 18 years old. Since you were 18 years old. Yes, and um, how did you know you were called to be a prophet? I, I have to ask you that. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people ask me that same question. Um, as I told, like I told my wife, um, when we first met, um, I was in the church service. I was in the service in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And there were multiple prophets there, and they were speaking different words, but I wasn't really paying attention, you know. Mm -hmm. I was just a regular minister, you know, ready to go home and go mm -hmm. eat, you know, go out. Mm -hmm. and, and I went to the altar, and something happened. Something happened. I, I felt like a weight, a weight of God's glory just, boom, hit me. Mm -hmm. I felt it hit me. And then I started hearing stuff I never heard before. Mm -hmm. And... One of the prophets came to me and he said, the Lord said prophet. And mm -hmm. I couldn't move. I was stuck, frozen, could not move at all. Mm -hmm. Could not move at all. Mm -hmm. And as the weeks went on from that year, you know, it's just been confirming and confirming. I was having dreams and God said, and God's been showing me different stuff. And the Lord came to me one night in my dream. He said, prophet of the most high God, come forth. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew it was, it was all in or nothing. It was all or nothing. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so here you are, um, prophet of God, uh, being used by God, mm -hmm. evangelizing all around the country and allowing God to use you mm -hmm. in a great way. Um, one of the things that you said uh, to me, prophet, um, you, you said that um, this is the season of rebirthing or yes. the season of rebuilding. And, and you talked about how you were stripped, <laughs> you know, where yes. God just literally took everything from you. And yeah. then you talked about um, your new book, um, Heart to Heart. I want us to go back on that and talk for mm -hmm. a minute because I believe there are people out there today need to hear this, mm -hmm. is that this is, and I, I really believe that I'm in agreement with you. Just this now. is the time of, of rebuilding. And in order for God to rebuild, he has to tear down. Yes. And, and I want you to encourage somebody today that they may be going through a season that they're in that season of tearing down, mm -hmm. of things being torn apart, of things being taken away. And, and they're asking God the question, why, Lord? Mm -hmm. Why me? And, and the answer for you today is that God is saying to you is that I, I have to tear down in order to rebuild. And I want you to share your testimony about that point in your life. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. Um, a point where I was homeless. I was very, very homeless and had two jobs and everything was stripped. Right? Mm -hmm. I, like I told you earlier, um, had two jobs, fired from both of them on the same day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> on the same day. And it was kind of heartbreaking. Because, you know, anybody who knows me loves, knows I love to make money. Mm -hmm. I, I love to make money, you know, because it takes money to do different things that you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. So when it was taken from me, I, I, was, I was heartbroken. And so me and my wife, you know, we were, you know, staying at her sister's. And then there's a point to where 
we, we, we got put out of that place. So then we, okay, hotel, and didn't have the money, so we got put out of that place. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it was a constant thing, constantly things going on, mm -hmm. you know, and like I told you earlier, the Lord spoke to me and said that I'm doing this because you were disobedient, and I'm doing this because there is something that I want to show you about yourself. That's mm -hmm. okay. And then, you know, and what is it that he, he was showing you about yourself, prophet? That there, there was a lot of pride, a lot of pride, a lot of arrogance. There was, there was within, there was in, in my inner self. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, be, be, being a minister, being a prophet of God, sometimes we as prophets think we get it all together when we really don't. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. And... And so God said, okay, you got a lot of pride. You got a lot of arrogance. You got a lot of bitterness. You got a lot of unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And he was just pointing. He just, just, just showed me everything about me. He was just talking to you like, yeah, you a prophet. Mm -hmm. But these are some issues that yes. I got a heart to heart. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, these are some things that you need to get delivered from. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a process because as soon as got delivered from one thing, it will come back up again mm -hmm. because because I will be used as a garbage dump. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will listen because I like to hear people out. Mm -hmm. So I would hear people and it would make me get depressed again, all over again. Mm -hmm. or, or situations where I, where I would see one person and in my mind I would go back to what they did to me in the past. So now, now, in, now in this season, I told you God is rebuilding. God, God is rebuilding because when I lost everything, it took a long period, almost about a year to get everything back, mm -hmm. to, to obtain everything back, a new job, um, place to stay, um, a, a reconnection that even in my relationships, mm -hmm. not, just, not just my marriage, but ministry, not just ministry, but mm -hmm. it, it's, just, it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, because being hurt by church folks, being hurt by family, being hurt by people who, do, who you don't even know, but it still affects you in some mm -hmm. way. So God, so God was just dealing with me and telling me, hey, you've mm -hmm. got to get delivered from these things in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. so. Amen. So this becomes your testimony mm -hmm. where, where, where there was a stripping away and God mm -hmm. just taking, <clears throat> taking, taking those things away from you that you thought you needed. <laughs> yeah, and those yes. things that um, you thought you depended on. Mm -hmm. and, and so here is a, a loving God. He brings you to the place where he has reestablished you. Yes. And at this place, what's going on? Uh, it, it, it's a lovely place. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy, but, but, but it, it's becoming easy. Mm -hmm. um, I have twin boys, you know. Twins? Twins, mm -hmm. twin boys. And I'm expecting another set of twins mm -hmm. as well. Wow. Um, my marriage is mm -hmm. being rekindled back together again. Mm -hmm. God, God is awesome. Um, new job. Mm -hmm. We're in a new job. Um, getting ready to start my business. My wife's going to start her business soon. Mm -hmm. um, ministry is, is just going in the vein that God ordained it to be. Mm -hmm. Because while I was back in Chicago, I was trying to really find myself. Okay, mm -hmm. find my place. But, you know, in finding my place, I got messed up here and messed up here. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of confusion. And, 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 and that's a good word for somebody. And I, I just want to stop there. Because that, that's profound what you just said, young man. Um, young people, you know, sometimes or, or older people, all of us, we want to find our place. But, you know, um, we don't have to find our place. We just need to follow God. Because he will lead us to the place where we need to be. See, that's how we get in trouble. So, so this is a good moment for you to, to look over some things and say, you know what? I've been trying to do it myself. I've been trying to find my place. I've been trying to find where I fit. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a word from the Lord for you today. And that word is, is that God is saying, follow me. Amen. Let me lead you Amen. into the Amen. pathway that God has. You know, we don't have to find our way Amen. to anything because God has already prepared the way. Right. He's already got a prepared place for you. Right. He's already prepared the way. So you just need to get on your knees and repent and say, God, I give up 
we might as well give up because you haven't done anything. Everything you've done, you've failed. You've been trying to find your place. You've been trying to, I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've been trying to find your way and God is saying, this is a new day. This is a new time for you that if you will just submit to me, says the spirit of God, I will lead you and I will direct you in the path that he has for us. Amen. 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 And, I felt that. And, and, and that's good, Apostle, because like I was saying, it, it's hard because young prophets, I, I'm, I'm going to say young, well, young people in ministry, period. Mm -hmm. Just young people young in people general. In general. I mean, because growing up, a lot of young people don't have fathers in the homes. Or sometimes they have fathers, but the fathers, they're, they're there, but they're not there. They're, they're, present, absent, yeah. they're present, but they're not present. Mm -hmm. They're in the home, but their presence is not around. Mm -hmm. And so um, finding a place. So I would say there's a lot of identity crisis going on mm -hmm. with young mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to go a step further and say young people who are in ministry trying to fill a void. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're trying to do something in church to try to fill a void, but the void is still empty because mm -hmm. if God is not present or if mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is not present in here, in your mm -hmm. heart, then, then you basically lost everything. Amen. There's, there's nothing, I mean, I, I would say it like this, there's nothing to live for if the Holy Ghost is not present in your life. Absolutely. You can't find your joy in church. Exactly. You know, your, your joy comes in Jesus. Exactly. So sometimes we believe that if I get, mm -hmm. you know, if I get involved in, into a good church mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I, I do all the activities in the church, I do all the mm -hmm. church thing, you know, mm -hmm. but, but I still don't have any peace. It, you know, that there's still no joy mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's not found in the church. Not really. It's found in Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, the body of Christ. You know, we just need to seek uh, deliverance yes. before we experience, whether you're young or whether you're old, um, before we experience uh, the breaking down. Yes. You know, or some people say, or, or, or the pulling of the sheets, you know, <laughs> well, whatever God yeah, has to do yeah, to yeah. break you down. And get your attention. And I, I used to tell people this, mm -hmm. prophet, is that when there's a calling on your life, God's going to get you one way or the other. Oh, so man. you might as well come in the easy way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you might as well come in the easy way because he's going to get mm -hmm. your attention yes. um, one way or the yeah. other. Amen. Now, and, and I'm telling you, there's a word for the Lord um, for you today. Um, young people, if, if you're watching, I want you to get on the phone right now and and call some friends up and say, there is a, this awesome young man of God who is a prophet, is about to preach Jesus. on the Preach the Word show. We'll be right back. There's a whole lot more on Preach the Word Worldwide Network TV. Hundreds of inspirational TV shows you can enjoy 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Find us on Roku, Smart TVs, or download us from the Google Play Store on your Android phone. Visit us online for program and TV distribution listings at www.preachthewordnetwork.com. That's www.preachthewordnetwork.com. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. There is a word from the Lord tonight um, for you all in TV land. Um, God is good. God is merciful. God is good. Um, I just want to hop straight into the word. Um, Father in heaven, we thank you right now, God, for what you have already done, oh God, throughout this day, God. Now, God, in Jesus' name, allow us, oh God, to be receptive to what you're getting ready to say to us in this very hour, oh God. Now, God, we thank you, oh God, that you will remove, oh God, our flesh out the way, and your spirit will move, and your spirit will speak to us, oh God, this very moment, oh God. And we thank you now, God, that the word, oh God, will pierce the hearts of everyone that will hear it in this audience, in TV land, oh God, at home, oh God. And we thank you for all these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, tonight, I, I just want to speak um, for about 15 minutes on the subject called Rebirth and On Assignment. Um, Jeremiah, the first chapter, um, in verse 4, it says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Verse 7 says, But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. The Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot, tear down, destroy, and overthrow. And then one more scripture in Matthew 24 in verse 4 says, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive you. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen. But in the end, it is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birthing pains. Now, as we look around in this world today, we see a lot of terrorist attacks. We see a lot of attacks going on in our nation, in our schools, in our communities, in our churches. But now, I have a question for you now. The question would be, what are you going to do in this end time that, 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 that all this stuff is going on? Matthew says there are wars and rumors of wars. Biblical prophecy coming to pass. Biblical prophecy spoken years ago, now coming to pass now. Now, we see that there, there, there's been um, killing of Christians in Kenya. There's been killing of Christians in China, killing of Christians overseas, just for declaring the word of God. But we here in America, we have free will and a free right to carry our Bible, to speak, uh, um, to have church. But most of us here in this nation refuse, not, not all of us, but some of us refuse to even allow God to even prick our hearts and speak to us. Now, God said to Jeremiah, do not say I am too young. You must go everywhere I send you and wherever I command you. He said, do not be afraid for I am with you and I will rescue you. Now, the Lord chose Jeremiah. Um, going up, the Lord told, told Jeremiah, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And, 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 I, and I formed you to be a prophet to the nations. Now, most of us in this room, we, we, we probably ran away from our calling. We probably ran away from stuff that happened to us. And, 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 and we didn't want to accept what God was doing for us. But now, I'm, I'm here to tell you tonight, that whatever, whatever God has called you to do, wherever God has sent you to go, wherever God has spoken to you, you must go. You must do it. You must obey the will of God and you must accept what God is doing in your life, even in this hour. Because now this is the season where God is shifting the tide. He is turning the tide and he, and he is birthing his people out to do his will and his work before he comes. So now, um, quickly, uh, I want to jump over to Jeremiah 1.17. He says, get yourself ready. Saints of God, people of God, young people, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because there's getting ready to be an outpour of the Holy Spirit on this nation. There's getting ready to be an outpour of the Holy Spirit on this generation that we have not seen before, because God is, it, because the Word of God says that um, He has chosen the young to lead. He has chosen, uh, I mean, you look at David, young, Jeremiah, young, Ezekiel, young. He's chosen the young to lead um, this nation um, in, in, into a prosperous land. Because like I said, God is shifting the tide from Moses to Joshua, from Elijah to Elisha. So, so, so God is shifting the tide. But before God shifts the tide, he must get us ready for what he's about to do in our life. And how, and how can God do that? God does that by preparation. What is preparation? Prep. Um, I'm, I'm going to use a school example. When you're in school, uh, the teacher gives you a test, and you kind of prep yourself, whether it's, okay, meditation, whether it's, okay, going over your final notes, going up, but, but your teacher is prepping you for the test. 
And this is the same thing that God is doing for us. God is prepping us for what's about to come. And if we're not prepared by the time God shows up, then he will choose somebody else. Because guess what? You are replaceable. And God will replace you and use somebody else, no matter if you're young or old. He said, stand up and say to them, whatever I command you. Now, 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 now this is the part that tripped me out. He said, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. <laughs> do not be terrified by them. So basically, if your enemies are coming nigh to you and you're bagging up against the fence, because all this has to do with spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare is just warring in the spirit. It's praying and it's fighting. Fighting your way through, pressing your way through stuff. So God says, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. So guess what? If you're fearful of your destiny and if you're fearful of where you're going in the future, then God will allow your mind, he will allow your mind to conceive to be, to, 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 to be a, a, a reprobated mind. He says, today, I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar, and a bronze wall to stand up against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you. But guess what, y'all? He said that it will not overcome you. It will not overcome you. We overcome by the what? The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. For I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Now get this. This is a season. Like I said, God is birthing us. But now, the word of the Lord came to me yesterday. And, 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 I, and I was yesterday pre preparing and prepping. And the word of the Lord came to me yesterday. And the Lord spoke. And he said, tell my people that in 2015... I'm not only am I shifting the tide, but I am economically shifting the finances. He said, I am shifting ministries. The Lord said that ministries that were held up behind me, he said, they will come forth. He said, I am birthing you forth. And the Lord says that you must prepare yourself for what's to come, because in this hour, I am trying to shake you. I am trying to break you down from the religion that you know to bring you to a relationship so you can do my will. I want to go back over to Matthew real fast, really quick. <clears throat> because biblical prophecy is coming to pass. Uh, there's so many wars going on. There's not only wars in America, but there's wars in our own homes. Sons against fathers, mothers against daughters, children um, rebelling and disobeying. And, and, and it's all nothing but a spirit. And when we get delivered, the prophet or God is not talking to the person, but he's talking to the spirit that's in us. And sometimes the demonic spirits in us can be resisted because we know what's getting ready to happen. Those spirits know they're getting ready to be cast out. Those spirits know that their time is up. I like to say it this way. Those spirits know that they're getting ready to be evicted. So watch this. He said, many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and they will deceive you. Now, catch this. And, and, I, want, and I want you to listen to this clearly. That there is so much deception going on in this world nowadays. People don't know. People don't know who's really truth or who's really a fake. But guess what? If you have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you, and you got the Holy Spirit talking to you, and you and and you're letting um, the Holy Spirit in you discern who's coming your way then you can know who's getting ready to try to manipulate you into doing something that God has not called you to do. We got so many people in positions that are not supposed to be in those positions. We got so many people in ministry claiming to be pastors and prophets and apostles, 
but they don't know that the real work behind it comes from suffering. It's blood, sweat, tears, it's submission. Many of us need to be careful that we don't fall into the schemes of the enemy. The Bible says the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. So we must be careful that we do not let the enemy creep up in our life. We must be careful that, okay, our emotions don't get in the way, our flesh will get in the way, because sometimes we let our flesh, uh, we let our flesh dictate where we're going to go next without allowing God, okay, um, to, to move us in the next direction. I'm going to say this to you. Do not pitch a tent in a temporary, do not pitch a tent in a temporary place that God has not called to a permanent place. So get this. I want to skip down to Matthew 24, verse 9. He says, then you'll be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. Because of who? Because of Jesus. At that time, many will turn away from the faith, and they will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of the wickedness, the love of, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to the nations and to, and to the end will come. Guess what, y'all? We're being persecuted daily just for being Christians. Like I said, Christians are overseas are being persecuted daily for this gospel. But now, I want to declare this to you. That when you understand who you are in Jesus, when you understand your identity in Christ, you don't have to be fearful of the assignment. Because the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned in judgment. And God is getting ready to condemn your enemies because there's work ahead for you to do. And I, and, and, and I want to share this with you. I want to speak prophetically to you at home watching this. That whatever your assignment is in this season, don't be fearful of it. The Bible says he is not giving us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. You must understand that your identity is in Christ and not this world. Young people, understand this, that God is even calling you to come out from among them. He said, be ye separate. Um, the Bible says, do not stand in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in, uh, or stand in the way of sinners, nor seat in the seat of the scornful. God is calling us higher, and we must go to where God says go. We must do what God says do. This world is under attack, and so are you. But, we, we, but when the attacks are coming, what will you do? Will you stand strong and let God take care of you, or will you run and be fearful? God is good, and let God be God. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I speak right now to the people in the, at home that you will allow their spirits, oh God, to be... Uh, um, Interrupted, oh God, by the everyday plans and your agenda, God, will be made whole in their life. God, let your spirit run firm in this hour for your people. Let your spirit run firm in this generation for these people. And God, we thank you. We bless you. And we count all these things done in Jesus name. Amen. Amen.